Thank you all for joining us today. And I hope that what we discuss will help each and every one of you grow in your personal relationship with the Father and His Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. I've recently counseled several brothers and sisters in Christ who have been struggling with sin, living worldly, and seemingly not able to get right before the Lord. As I pondered the conversations I had with these different brothers and sisters, the Lord put on my heart to share this study for anyone who is having a tough time with their walk with Him. So here is some truly godly biblical advice to help anyone who is facing struggles in their Christian walk. Let's proceed. I remember when I was a new Christian, and I was having so much trouble stopping committing the same sins over and over again, still doing the same worldly behavior over and over again. It seemed as if I couldn't get right. I kept trying to stop doing what I was doing, change how I was living, but it just seemed as if I couldn't get right. One day I cried out to the Lord and said, Lord, I can't get right. Please help me get right before you. The Lord responded by placing two scriptures right in front of my eyes. And those scriptures were Mark chapter 7, verses 21 through 23. From within, out of men's hearts come evil thoughts, sexual immorality, theft, murder, adultery, greed, malice, deceit, lewdness, envy, slander arrogance, and folly. All these evils come from inside and make a man unclean. And the second passage that God put before my eyes was Galatians chapter 3, verses 2 through 3. Let me ask you this one question. Did you receive the Holy Spirit by obeying the law of Moses? Of course not. You received the Spirit because you believed the message you heard about Christ. Are you so foolish after having started your new lives in the Spirit, why are you now trying to become perfect by your own human effort? After reading these two passages, I was so excited. I read them over and over again until I got what the Lord wanted me to understand. You see, for all of us, our biggest problem is not the external, but the internal. All of us have a heart problem. In order for us to get right before the Lord, then the heart must be changed. And this only happens by the power of God in response to our faith. With the heart, one believes unto righteousness. In his grace, God can create a new heart within us. He promises to revive the heart of the contrite ones. So why do so many of us still struggle with getting right with God? One of the major issues with most Christians today is that we are being taught to focus more on the sin than the Savior. Let me say it again. We are being taught to focus too much on the sin rather than the Savior. Too often, we are like the Pharisees or the Church of Galatia, depending merely on external actions and behaviors rather than relying on the inner working of the Spirit. We think that if we can just change our actions, everything will turn out right and then we overcome our sin. It's almost drilled into most Christians that our sins are the issues, when in reality, they are symptoms of a deeper problem. Brother Paul asked the Church of Galatia a rhetorical question. He said, did you receive the Holy Spirit by obeying the law of Moses? Meaning, was it your external efforts to get right before God that granted you access to God's Holy Spirit? Paul's answer is, of course not. We only receive the Holy Spirit because we believe the gospel. Paul then goes on to say to them, Iste utos aniatos, or are you so foolish? The transliteration of this passage actually reads, You in this manner are not understanding. You are thoughtless and unmindful. He's saying to them that they lacked understanding were thoughtless and unmindful of the fact they only received a quickening of the Spirit because of their believing the message of the gospel, not in any works that they had done. And that faith in the gospel reconciled them unto God. And after being reconciled unto God, they did not understand that their continued reconciliation with God also comes by faith. 
Only by faith are we conformed into the image of Christ. Instead, they began focusing on the external, their actions, and they tried to use human efforts to straighten themselves out before God. So Paul rhetorically asked them again. Verse 5, so again I ask you, does God give you his spirit and work miracles among you by the works of the law or by your believing what you heard? Verse 6, just as Abraham believed God and it was accounted to him for righteousness. Understand then that those who have faith are sons of Abraham. See, our actions are not the issue. Our hearts are the issue. Remember, Jesus says, from within, out of a man's heart, comes evil thoughts. Our sins are but the byproduct of what is in our hearts that manifest themselves outwardly. The reason so many of us find ourselves struggling to overcome sin, change our behavior, and get right with God is because we are focusing on the sin, trying to control our actions through human efforts when what's needed is a change of heart. In last week's study, we mentioned how many people use that old tired cliche, God knows my heart. Yes, he does. And he tells us the human heart's natural condition is evil, treacherous, and deceitful. In other words, at the deepest levels of our heart, meaning our mind, emotions, and desires, we are all tainted by sinfulness and selfishness, and God wants to give us a new heart. Ezekiel chapter 36, verses 22 through 27. This is what the sovereign Lord says. It is not for your sake, people of Israel, that I am going to do these things, but for the sake of my holy name, which you have profaned among the nations where you have gone. I will show the holiness of my great name, which has been profaned among the nations, the name you have profaned among them. Then the nations will know that I am the Lord declares the sovereign Lord, when I am proved holy through you before their eyes. For I will take you out of the nations, I will gather you from all the countries, and bring you back into your own land. I will sprinkle clean water on you, and you will be clean. I will cleanse you from all your impurities and from all your idols. I will give you a new heart and put a new spirit in you. I will remove from your heart of stone and give you a heart of flesh, and I will put my spirit in you and move you to follow my decrees and be careful to keep my laws. The term heart used in scripture always refers to a person's soul, meaning their mind, will, and emotions, which also is referred to as the inner self or inner man. The new heart God gives us is a spiritual heart where our emotions and desires begin to line up with our beliefs in him. This change of heart requires a supernatural transformation. Jesus calls it being born again. When we are born again, God performs a heart transplant by the power of the Holy Spirit, changing our hearts from self-centered, worldly, sin-focused thoughts, emotions, desires, to a spiritual God-centered focus. This does not mean we become perfect or immediately stop sinning, not at all. We still retain our sinful nature and are still free to choose whether or not to obey God. However, the power of sin that once controlled us has been broken and we are given access to God's transforming power. With our new hearts, we are declared righteous before God and the Holy Spirit gives us a desire that was once strange to us, and that desire is to want to please God. 2 Corinthians 3.18 says that we are being transformed into his image with ever-increasing glory, which comes from the Lord, who is the Spirit. Receiving a new heart from God is about transformation into the new person God designed for us to be. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has passed away. Behold, the new has come. As our hearts are transformed by God, we are able to discern his will and accomplish his purpose for our lives. Now, here's the thing. When God gives us a new heart, he doesn't do anything with our old way of thinking, feeling, emotions, desires, or will. They stay with us. There it is right there. 
After the Lord put Mark 7 verses 21 through 23 and Galatians 3 verses 2 through 3 before me, I began to realize that to overcome the sin in my life and to stop doing what I was doing, change how I was living, and start to get right before God, I needed the power of the Holy Spirit to continue working on transforming my heart. I found that white knuckling, clenching my fists, resisting the urges of sin was nothing more than a war of attrition. I would win some, but would lose most often. I began to understand what Jesus meant when he told the Pharisees and the Sadducees, Woe to you, teachers of the law and Pharisees, you hypocrites. You clean the outside of the cup and dishes, but inside they are full of greed and self-indulgence. Blind Pharisee, First clean the inside of the cup and dish, and then the outside also will be clean. If I wanted to get right before God, I needed to allow the Holy Spirit to work in and through me to change the inside, and the outside would then follow. I realized that God wanted my obedience to come from my heart, not mere adherence to the outward rules and laws. My obedience was to be a byproduct of my new heart of a new nature. I knew that I was a born-again Christian, and I felt like a new person. So I then began realizing what was missing, and that was I needed to line up my new heart with a new way of thinking. I needed to begin allowing God's Word to manifest in me to transform me. So I began telling myself four to five times a day, I'm a new creature through Christ Jesus. Behold, old things have passed away. Behold, all things are new. Many of us, after receiving a new heart, still find ourselves in a vicious cycle of repeating the same sins, not changing, living the same where we were pre-conversion. Why? Well, I find that there are three main reasons. The first being what we just discussed. As Brother Paul explains, it's because we lack understanding. We are thoughtless of the fact that our having received a new heart only came by our believing, which reconciled us unto the Lord. Yet after conversion, we lack the understanding. We become thoughtless to the fact that our new heart, new person is a spiritual one, and our continued growth of our spiritual being can only come by a continued faith in the power of the working of the Holy Spirit in our life. Growth in the Spirit can never be had by mere human effort. We must continue to rely upon faith in God through the power of the Holy Spirit to help us overcome our sinful nature. This is why Brother Paul said they were being foolish or they lacked understanding or were thoughtless. And he asked them the rhetorical question, are you so foolish? After began by means of the Spirit, are you now trying to finish by means of the flesh? It's obvious they and us are to continue in the way we began. This is why Brother Paul tells us in Ephesians 2, 8, For it is by grace you have been saved through faith, and this not from yourselves. It is the gift of God, not by works, so that no one can boast. The word saved, soadzo, means delivering, healing, to make well, restore to health one suffering from a disease. And the word saved used in this passage is a present tense verb, meaning it's something continual. Sin is a disease, more than alcoholism is, drug addiction is, and other types of addictions that we label diseases. And only God has the cure, can bring healing, restoration, and health from the disease of sin. Now, here's what's interesting of this phrase, not from yourself. It actually translates, u, meaning no, not, ek, from out of, su, you. So a saying that you are saved, no, not from out of you, but that it is something freely given by God and not of works, which is the word ergon, meaning a deed, action, something which you accomplished or did. It is God who granted you this grace and favor. Does this mean we don't need to make an effort on our part to resist sinning? No, it does not, because he tells us we are to resist sin. However, There are many sins in our lives that have a stronghold on us that we are unable to resist in our own human efforts, and we must rely upon our faith in the Lord for deliverance and healing. This is why we are told to come to the throne of grace boldly but humbly in our time of need and to be strong in the Lord in the power of his might. 
Some sins are only overcome by running to the Lord continually in prayer, pleading and begging his forgiveness, healing, and deliverance. And this is only done through faith and knowing he sees and hears me. Amen. The second reason, as we are told in 1 Peter chapter 4, verses 1 through 4, therefore, since Christ suffered in his body, arm yourselves also with the same attitude, because whoever suffers in the body is done with sin. As a result, they do not live the rest of their earthly lives for evil human desires, but rather for the will of God. For you have spent enough time in the past doing what pagans chose to do, living in debauchery, lust, drunkenness, orgies, carousing, and detestable idolatry. They are surprised that you do not join in their reckless wild living, and they heap abuse on you. Have you ever found it hard to do what you want or feel like doing? No, you don't. People do what they want and feel like doing. But Peter tells us we are to arm ourselves with the same attitude as Christ who suffered in his body or flesh. The word arm, hoplizo, means to equip, make ready yourself with the same attitude or the word enoya, meaning thinking, thoughtfulness, and consideration. So what Peter is saying is that once I accepted the Lord's invitation of salvation, I am to equip myself and readily prepare myself to conduct myself accordingly. It's like being invited to be in someone's wedding. When I accept the invitation, I know I'm expected to dress a certain way, be part of the wedding rehearsal, and behave a certain way while participating in the wedding. I can't not attend the wedding rehearsal and believe I'm going to be in the wedding. I can't show up to the wedding in my street clothes and be my same disruptive self. No, I have to plan on renting a tux, show up at the wedding rehearsals, and act and behave respectfully, fulfilling my part of being part of the wedding party. Once we accept the Lord's invitation to be part of his wedding party, we are to equip ourselves with the same thinking, thoughtfulness, and consideration to how God expects us to conduct ourselves. I have to think about the fact that I can't just be willy-nilly anymore. God expects better of me. I can't just continue to run with the same people, go to the same places, live the same way. I have to think about that I now have to be responsible and accountable to God. See, that's where most people's problems lie. They don't want to be responsible and accountable to God. Having the same attitude of Christ is how Christ lived. He lived accountable to the Father. Therefore, his thoughts were to please the Father. When we allow this attitude in us, we will begin doing things, not doing things, based on our wanting to please the Father. It's like Tony Braxton's song, Love Should Have Brought You Home Last Night. In the song, she says, Should I even listen? Should I even try? Well, I just be hearing the same old lines, baby. See, it doesn't matter what you say this time. Because our whole relationship is built on one lie. You say the things aren't the way they seem, but still, you can't come straight with me. How can you think that you're in love when you don't know the meaning of it? Love should have brought you home last night. You should have been with me. Should have been right by my side. Arming ourselves with the same attitude of Christ brings the right motivation to do right before God. What we begin doing and not doing starts becoming second nature to us as we seek to please the Father. However, there are many who, after accepting the Father's invitation of salvation, sabotage themselves by thinking of the things they used to do, certain activities they found enjoyable or pleasing, the fun they had, etc. Not even realizing these thoughts and musings are from the world the flesh and the devil, working on their mind to prevent it from being renewed, preventing them from realizing they are new creations in Christ Jesus, having been given a new heart and are to live as a new creation, forgetting what is behind but pressing forward to the mark of the high calling of our Lord Jesus Christ. The third reason is, as it says in Proverbs 4.23, Guard your heart with all diligence, from out of it flows the issues of life. As we see in Ezekiel 36, 25 through 26, it tells us that God sprinkled clean water on us 
and we were made clean and that he gave us a new heart and put a new spirit in us. He removed from us the heart of stone and gave us a heart of flesh. Now that God has given us a new heart, we are instructed above all with all diligence to guard our hearts because out of it flows the issues of life. As we said earlier, when the word of God references the heart, it is almost always referring to the inner core of a person, their thoughts, feelings, desires, will, and choices that make that person who he or she is. The heart is the core of our being, and God sets high importance on keeping our hearts pure and right. Once God has sprinkled our hearts clean through forgiveness, cleansing, and washing, removing from us that heart of stone and giving us a heart of flesh, we are to guard it. Guard it from allowing in or back in those things that defile it. We are told that everything we do flows from our hearts. The heart is the core, the inner essence of who we are. Jesus says a good man brings good things out of the good stored up in his heart, and an evil man brings evil things out of the evil stored up in his heart. What is in our hearts is that which is let in and stored up, whether it's pride, rebellion, coveting, lust, greed, spite, bitterness, meanness, unforgiveness, hatred, lies, depression, unfaithfulness, etc., All sin must first be conceived and dwelt upon for the sinfulness to become an action. Therefore, the first line of defense must be to refuse it, not let it in. 2 Corinthians 10 verses 3 through 5 tell us to cast out every argument, pretension, imagination that set itself against the knowledge or will of God, that we are to take every thought captive, bringing them into conformity to the will of God and having a readiness, or the word hetamos, which means a preparedness to vindicate or dispense justice to disobedience. Now, the word for disobedience, parakae, does not mean an act or action, but it means hearing amiss, an imperfect hearing, contrary hearing. It is a disobedience of that of hearing an opposing attitude and listening to it. The Bible tells us that our thoughts often dictate who we become. So to guard our hearts, we have to have a preparedness to guard against the opposing thoughts of the world, the flesh, and the devil. We have to reject them, cast them down and away from us, which is a critical element to guarding our hearts. The Apostle Paul instructs us, finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent and praiseworthy, think about such things. See, dwelling on these things will help to build a guard fence around our hearts. Now, I know there's much more we can go on and on about regarding struggling with the same worldly behavior over and over again and struggling with sin and seemingly not being able to get right with God. But these are all struggles each Christian will have. And for the most part, they are part of our personal relationship with the Lord, which need to be worked out and worked through between you and him. And I would advise you to get on your knees in your prayer closet, in your personal time with the Lord, or really any time, and seek God's face, his grace, and love kindness. He will hear you and answer you. So for now, my brothers and sisters, I hope you have been blessed and the eyes of your heart enlightened. In Jesus' holy and precious name, amen. Thank you for tuning in to Fellowship in the Word. If you've been blessed by this video, please click the subscribe button and the bell to receive notification of when we upload new videos. Thank you and God bless you.